full thing right here. We're going to find out now. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another fantasy football show. It's the uh, week one special football today. Recording this on Thursday morning. So uh, we'll get to the Kelsey news, but exciting times. Taylor, we're, uh, we're picking it up, you know. When the intro is going, you don't, you shouldn't talk. <laughs> I'm three, just, I think. Just or PSA. I think you're three for three, uh, to be three honest. Three, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's like, yeah, you, it's like, a, 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 he just a response. He hears the music and he's like, I must, <laughs> yeah, I must talk. Like, what I are we gotta, doing right now? And gotta I gotta talk. It, yeah. It's because we hop on, we hop on the link and then Taylor's just spouting NFL takes mostly, uh, before it was uh, hating on Justin's Packers, so we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah, uh, let me give you the injury rundown real quick for anyone who doesn't know. Sick Insights is where you want to head on the website siccore.com. That's uh, updated with the practice reports as they come out, um, projections, scores, all that stuff. So Travis Kelsey, for example, we have as a twenty-two six score, very low on him playing t- uh, tonight on the Thursday night opener. Uh, bone bruise. I mean, it's hard with no knee. Or no, no knee, no video. Uh, the news is hyper. <laughs> wow. It would be harder with no knee yeah. to play, you know. I mean, maybe people have done it, but not not as a top fantasy tight end. <laughs> Everyone uh, Spears is doing it, kind of, right? He apparently has no ACLs, is what the rumors are. Yeah, so, and OBJ almost. didn't think he had an ACL before. Yes, yeah, so I think he has one now. We'll, so we we'll keep you updated on that. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think all eyes are on Kelsey. He still went six in my home league, which was interesting. That was after the injury news. So, <laughs> well, how, but, well, that's the question though. How far would he have dropped? I think maybe like early second round. I don't early know. second would be the lowest, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But go on. So, yeah. uh, no, no structural damage. Positive news in general for for what it was. I mean, it just came out as hyperextended knee, so people's mind went racing. But um, our panel of doctors aren't overly concerned. It's just more like week two is more realistic. Short turn around. He heard it Tuesday. They're playing Thursday. Why well, push him through it? If he's active, he might be a decoy. Just just pick up no gray and, and bench Kelsey. I don't. He's not going to be the main part of the game plan, even if he is active. Uh, moving on, Terry McLaurin has a turf toe in the uh, playoff preseason game against the the Ravens that they snapped the streak. Uh, we saw a video of him not moving too great, not cutting uh, decisively on that right foot. In his foot in, yeah. Yeah, it's big for getting off the line, so maybe wait another week or two on McLaurin. Uh, looking like he is going to play, but maybe as a decoy, maybe uh, opening up stuff for Jahan Dotson. Uh, JSN, going to play through that wrist fracture. That's another interesting one. Uh, our panel of doctors thought it was more multi-week potential IR candidate uh, just because of the, the injury and lack of blood flow to the wrist. But it's looking like he's going to be out there with a brace. I don't know that I've seen a wide receiver out there with a splint brace on it, on his wrist. But, uh, again, another one you probably want to sit and just wait and see. We, we don't know how involved he's going to be with the offense. Obviously, he's an exciting rookie that he's going to get the ball as Maybe a season progresses. Maybe he's just like a really, really good blocker. And Pete Carroll's like, we got to get this guy out there. They drafted him really, really high because he can block really, he really can block. well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he wants to. Yeah, that, this is good for uh, Kenneth Walker. Not Jake Bobo, who's like nine <laughs> feet tall. Right, right. Yeah, at least it's not hamstring. I think everyone's just – if you see JSN with a hamstring again, people are going to go, okay, here we go again. The, the Ohio State. I mean, I know that most of the year was fake hamstring maybe just to get ready for the big, the big leagues, but uh, we'll see on that. Speaking of hamstrings, Justin's favorite team, <laughs> the Packers apparently have I, – I think they're teleke- telekinetically connected to the hamstring. I don't know how both of your top wide receivers pull it on the same day in the same practice. Yeah, but uh, Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs not looking likely for against the Bears this week. How did you who how really you needs a that? hamstring? Yeah. Do you need a hamstring? I mean, can you just you can Do still you need there. a hamstring? Do you need a hamstring, Justin? Because you should be able to give at least both of those to at least both your players. So you can if I could, I would. You know, I you know I would do that. You know <laughs> I, would. I can't though, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Fleur, call him up. He's got two available. I'm your guy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> list, right? I feel like it's in the future. That's like the Repo Men. I remember seeing that Jude Law movie. I know Mr. Movie Man, Justin. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, that's like when rich people had like this backup body that had like body parts. <laughs> like I feel like that would we would have endless football if that was the case for like we could just like the jib is just calling up. He's getting a new scaphoid bone in his arm. He's ready yeah. to play with one. There's no issues. That also means we don't have a job as well at six court, yeah. probably. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're but just yeah, getting new parts. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Thing that's <laughs> happening, right? Like Kadarius Tony's the top of that list for the experimental 
<laughs> parts uh, list. He's, he's, he's the lab rat on that. They need to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it looks like he's playing tonight, Kadarius Tony, with the he had the meniscus trim, which is the better one. You don't want the full uh, reconstruction or whatever. Um, interesting to see how involved he is. I think we have him as seventy-seven six score, right, Taylor? Yep. Yeah. No, it's it's a little low because like it, it's it might be too close still, right? Week one, right? Um, I would shoot for his unders and anywhere DFS just avoid him. Uh, you see some props that are a certain number. You might want to go under them. Especially, I know there's no Kelsey, so you're thinking maybe Tony gets more, but maybe you should go for the Sky Moors, the Scantlings, and the Rashid Rices that have no issues going in the game tonight. I just can't wait for everyone to overreact on the target share of what happens tonight with the, the Chiefs wide receiver room. It's a wrong number, right? Like, it's, yeah. if it's not Kelsey there, then it's not figured out yet, right? Like, I just want to know, I told you, it's like, who's going to be the number one there? Like, there's no, there's no Juju. Scanling, you Packer fan know, he's a straight line runner. He's good at it, but he's not doing anything else. He's never getting eight plus targets. Yeah. So who's going to be? Is it going to be the Rice? I don't, at six score, we do not believe it's going to be Justin Ross. So I would maybe scratch that off the list of people that it could be. Uh, we just don't like that uh, that neck issue he has. Uh, but I don't know, whoever has that receiver that they drafted and, you know, so late because no one knew who it was, you're going to get a top player. I think that would help you, whoever it is. But is I it see. is it going to be consistent enough to matter? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's it like, I just, that's my thing. I, I don't know. As a quarterback, you would think you'd want somebody that you can rely on. It's not fun being a Patriot and throwing at Jacoby Myers and then freaking, you know, whoever they had last year, eight different people. It's not. Yeah. That's Parker. Kind of revive then, Nikhil Harry. Hunter Henry. Like, that's not yeah. fun. You need to have a go-to guy. When he had Tyree Kill, do you think he was stressing out at all? Even last year, because this is the first time he has no Hill and no Kelsey in how long? Right, so he needs to have a, a go-to guy. Uh, I want to bring up just, one more, one more yeah, injury. I, I, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we get sorry. We'll we'll get to the Chiefs wide receivers. I I feel like it'll be a weekly topic just to, <laughs> to go back yeah. and forth. Sky Moore had nine targets. He's the guy, and then next week he gets like two. It's so one hundred percent something can happen. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah, uh, Marquise Brown's an interesting one. We weren't high on him uh, given his foot injury last year, and that it kind of lingered into the offseason training camp. Now he picked up a hamstring. Not sure if he's going to play week one. I I didn't get him anywhere in fantasy drafts. I don't know about you guys. I wouldn't touch him, right? And then I don't even know if that's a real hamstring because I don't know if I want balls being thrown to by Josh Dobbs. You know, yeah. like that's he just got there like 16 days ago. That's not even someone they've been like bonding with and stuff. I'm just like start Clayton Tune. Like you have not, you don't even know what that's about yet. Like let's see what you know. It could be horrible. And then you can just throw Dobbs right in. I don't know about you guys, but like I think that whole once you know about Murray situation, I think you're in an Ertz is already hurt. I think you're just avoiding that entire Cardinals offense except James Conner. James right? Conner, we know yeah, we know yeah, you're yeah. high on James Conner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Conner spice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I was in. I was I was kind of in on on Marquise Brown. I, I think he, he usually would get picked in most drafts that I was in. He got picked before I was comfortable taking him. Yeah, they're gonna throw like you said. It's gonna be it's gonna be poor throws. Uh, but. Yes. I mean, target is a target. I mean, in a bad offense, I guess yeah. I'd take the wide receiver, but I don't know. I, I don't have any shares of him, but I was well, looking I get, at I get, it. I get that because, like, no one has confidence in Rondo Moore and Greg, um, I don't know, Dorsch, is it? I don't know how you're saying Dor that. Dorsch is still there. Dorsch, I actually do like Trey McBride a little bit because none of these say. quarterbacks right now are throwing the ball anywhere near 50 yards probably. So Moore, Moore is a good little player because he's a gadget. He can probably, like, little Wando Robinson type, you know, skid around and uh, get through, but – these aren't people that, like you said, they're Brown is the alpha. There's no Hopkins. And I mean, that's the dude. So if they are going to throw, he is going to get the targets regardless of yeah. the footage. Zach Ertz still coming off the ACL. So that might open the door early on for Trey McBride, get some chemistry with the, the new quarterback. Whereas I'm sure Zach, I'm Ertz, sure has Zach Ertz, a, Ertz is itching to come back to this <laughs> yeah. squad. He he's loving to, it. Yeah, he's like, let's come on. Let's injury too. Where's his hand? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's coming. If he's smart, he'll say, I'll play when Kyler plays. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> betting on second half of the season for sure. uh, kyler's an interesting one i had him on the list for later but if he's on the waiver wire are you picking him up and stashing him i mean he's gonna be on the ir for a while right so is it is it worth using that spot well i guess i can speak on this because we just did our company draft a couple days ago and he was one of my last two picks it was an 18 rounder if i can put him on pup and then i just whooped up noah gray right after so i was like really proud of myself but like from that point of view like i don't see why not I think all of our stuff is saying there's a chance he doesn't play at all, which is like, fine. You just have somebody. I mean, if you get a game where your quarterback's hurt or something and he goes and has like 20, 20 points, that's probably, you're not expecting anything. Right. So like, why not at least put him on pup? Yeah. I just, your I, IR. I think even when he comes back, 
I mean, obviously there's not a ton of weapons in that offense, and I don't think he's going to have the rushing ability. I mean, the, the ACL recovery is going to extend well into the season, late season. I think you're right to stash him on IR right now. I would just say for anyone that's doing that, don't be scared to drop him off IR if you need the spot. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, I can't can't move, can't drop Kyler Murray. He's going to be super valuable late. Yeah, he he's going to come, he's gonna come back. He's going to come back with a fire in his heart and ready yeah. to play for his squad. I'm sure. Yeah, that's going to John the Gannon, Gannon just <laughs> inspires that fire in everyone. So yeah. I can't see why killers. not. He wants killers, guys. So yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's get into uh, some leftovers. The leftovers. Wow. Forgot how awesome that was. Oh, wait, we're looping again. it. We're doing it again. Wow. My dog. No, you want to go twice. One and a half is all I'll allow. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Leftovers is uh, our segment talking about the guys that are left on the, the waiver wire or uh, more like fancy or free agent guys that didn't go on waivers that uh, weren't, weren't desirable enough for waivers. But you may be able to pick them up, plug them in if you're waiting for. Uh, late news i mean obviously cooper cup ruled out so that might lead into our first leftover taylor you want to take it uh puka nakao yeah byu he did pick a couple injuries up last year but it was his final year they already knew what he was about he's super speedy he's very uh very very he can get open super separation um there's not much there van jefferson's there um I do like Tyler Higby too, but Puka Nakao you can get everywhere. I know a lot of a couple of people in the fantasy com- community have been really hype on him, and they've been watching him throughout preseason. Uh, he's been doing really well in camp and preseason, so that's a name to watch. You could probably get him in most of your leagues. Uh, that's an interesting one. Obviously, they're going to be throwing. Who knows how how much they're going to be running the ball? Cam Akers and uh, is Kyron Williams still there? I know Justin. Kyron right, Williams, Williams oh, is there. still there. All right, they had him on ice. They had him on ice. <laughs> they're playing the long game up for the fresh for preseason. For this they season. wanted, to, yeah, hundred percent. So, I, I'm still holding out hope that there might be something there for Kyron Williams. I don't know. We'll, we'll All see. right, keep holding that hope. <laughs> uh, another one. He might might have gone to drafts, but if he's available, Deion Jackson is the uh, probably the Colts back to own. Maybe Evan Hole. I mean, they're going to ride the hot hand. I don't know what what's going on there. I heard mm-hmm. Moss is maybe going to be ready to go week one, and if he is, that at Jackson, I don't know. I'd still use Jackson. Um, Moss hasn't been there for the entire like last couple of weeks. He's I can't just jump into a game plan, right? They didn't know if they were going to have him yet, so they might be like a three headed monster that might be gross that you might not want him. But Jackson is the one that can receive the ball the best, so he is going to be out there probably more than the three. You're going to see Richardson dump the ball off to him very much, or, or is he just going to tuck the ball and run? Get it there. Like, you just have to get it there. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. yeah. No, I, I can't wait to see how they involve Richardson because it might, if they're smart, I mean, Steichen's smart. So maybe they give him some some dump off throws to Jackson, just get some confidence, pressure off him so they're not yeah. keying in on yeah. him. But yeah, who, who knows? I want to see him as a runner. That's, deep. That's, that's, his, that's his big thing. I already know he can't throw yet. I saw it in Florida. I saw it in preseason, you know, like, but he does have a rushing ability that's s- similar to like Newton and Fields that can like completely change the game. Like Fields has games where he's the worst player on the field passing. And it could, and then like he does a 56 yard run and you're like, holy crap, my fantasy team's winning now. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's just like that's one, the best one part. Play. Yeah. It's, it's like you get, like we talked about last episode, remember, he can have 100 and 100. And no quarterback should have the 100 passing and be good. But he's having 100 and 100. That's good enough for any fantasy league, right? <laughs> but like, that's the kind of stuff that um, Richardson has the ability to do. But um, it was first game. They there's already they already have their no running back, right? Taylor's not there. They have a right guard that has some calf issue. I wouldn't really pick that Colts offense to start. But if you don't have any running backs, Jackson is going to have opportunities. I feel like every year I'm like, I want to be in on Michael Pittman. But I just can't touch him. Like just I just, weird. it's Always so weird. gross. Just yeah. get him a good per- quarterback. Get him a somebody who doesn't have a noodle arm or uh, or just wants to run. I don't know. I, I I would be curious to see him in an offense with a good quarterback. So noodle arm. We're talking about like Rivers and Ryan. And then yeah, we're talking about the old heads from last yeah, last year. Heads. Yeah, yeah, those guys. <laughs> who's the who's the third guy? We uh, have another one we have on the list is Jake uh, Jake Bobo. We got in here for uh, the JSN injury. Depending yes. on how involved JSN is, um, we might think he just gets some early throws just to get him out there, maybe more blocking. I think Jake Bobo's maybe one you don't pick up yet, but put on your watch list. Just He's based, a TV uh, guy. I don't, I don't see don't him like how it that. develops with JSN. Yeah, my bad. I didn't see him going down the field and getting a lot, but he's a huge body and he's a good red zone target. So he could get you six points with one catch. You know, I wouldn't expect too much. But like you said, if JSN isn't fully effective, then 
Bobo will be out there. Fun name to say too. I mean, you yeah. got to look at that. that. That's something that's uh, you know, like I, you see that on the trending players list. You're you're you gravitate yeah. towards it. You're like, do yeah. I want Bobo? Like that's a good team name guy, especially this early in the season. That's why he's probably flying up on the trending list on sleeper because they're like. I, I'm struggling to find a good team name. What can I throw Bobo in uh, to? So that's a, gotta add him to the team so you can leak. Bobo the clown. Name. I was like a cartoon. There or it something. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that it. Get in there. If you have Debo, you could be Debo and Bobo. De Debo, Debo, Bo. Now, now, I don't. That's gross. Deep there's bubble. gotta be something else. No, uh, there's a, to be fair, there's uh, a lot no of uh, there's a lot of. Board. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a lot of I feel like last names that are uh, skirting the line of like, I don't know, just dangerous. Uh, some kickers out there with some names Dang, that are. Yeah, that, some examples there. What's some dangerous examples? I'm just saying, like, like in the phallic department, uh, there's a lot of <laughs> names I feel like out there. Uh, is, obviously, Dicker the Kicker is something that there a lot of people are yes. using. But yeah, I, I feel like this year's a, a, a big year for uh, just names that are that are walking the line. I'm see, I'm walking the line. You're too, walking the line. Saying. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not the guy that does that. All right, I stick. I have a team name. I stick with it uh, every year. But I don't. What's your like team to, name? What is your team name you pick every year? So, so okay. So there's an artist. And this is going to get into another thing there's an artist out there that did a bunch of superheroes uh dressed as manatees uh so i i, I do i kind of go back and forth between uh aqua manatees uh spider manatees and this year i think i did bat manatees there you go so i so i, I use his art i think it's like jomi ha or something like that i don't even gotta check it out though I, that's my little shout out i don't even know if he's still making art anymore but anyway that's it go. that's yes. all i got aqua manatees that was your baseball team oh, name. I remember that. good yeah. to have a famous football brand yeah, yes. oh, it's a brand. It's a man. I don't know why. I mean, manatees are, are pretty cool, but like they're not close to being my favorite animal. They're just, the art <laughs> they're is just not, hilarious. 30. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, the top. I don't know. <laughs> they're fun, though. Yes. <laughs> they're they're leftover animals. They are. For sure. <laughs> no, I don't know. They might. Okay. They might be a little better than that. All right. I mean, like. Is there any leftover manatees to pick up on the waiver wire, Jacob? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't know. Who else is out uh, there? Jane Reed, I think, is the last one we had. Yeah, Packer Vanities. Fan. I think, I think he was looking for like Calvin Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> is he still on the waiver wire? I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing or not. No. Okay. Yeah. He's saying, that's that's. I feel like it's too far. We're too far gone from Calvin Benjamin. He should be catching right, straight. Go back, in 2023. Reed. go back to Reed, Packers fan. Why do you think he's a big deal going into? Well, obviously the two the the, the double hamstring guys are. Uh, if that's a real yeah. issue, I know. So yesterday, obviously, was Wednesday. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday. Uh, that, that's how calendars work. Uh, they're both, we're practicing. I mean, the, sometimes people miss practice on Wednesday. You know, I'd be curious to see what the report says Thursday. Maybe they're actually back out there in like a limited fashion. I don't know if that was just like a cautionary hamstring or like it's a real thing. And I don't want to jump to conclusions, but either way, I do think Jaden Reed is good at football. Uh, I, I think he's somebody that you can, it, you, obviously, Taylor, you're a little hesitant on Jordan Love's pa passing volume. Uh, I don't right. know if you want to be going after the wide receiver three. Um, for the Packers, but if somebody's out, which I mean, Romeo Dobbs and, and I guess Christian Watson last year, both had issues uh, staying on the field. So, I mean, yeah. Jaden Reed could be a ticket that might cash. And I'm, I'm a little more optimistic that they're going to be throwing the ball more. I feel like a lot of people just think Jordan Love might be bad, but I just think that's because you just haven't seen anything from him really out there. And I, and, and when you have, obviously when, when he's coming in spot started for Aaron Rodgers. It's a very limited fashion, and they were trying to keep the training, keep them on the training, the training wheels on, or on the train track, or wherever we want to say it. I think they're going to let him loose a little bit. He's going to take deep shots to Christian Watson. That's going to happen. Right. But I think I, I, I'm a little higher on on the wide receivers in Green Bay, and I guess it is. You can say it's biased, but I think there's going to be more passing volume there than most people think. Well, one thing you said, Jaden Reed is good at football. That's for sure. He was at Michigan State. He's a super good uh, deep route runner. He is a, a uh, not a limited route tree. He's not like a scantling. He can run around a little bit. So, no, your your wide receivers have issues with staying healthy. Watson has a long injury history, even in college. So he has a, he has trouble staying on the field. Um, the, your deep shots are how you guys stayed in games last year, right? Like, if you didn't have those long Watson touchdowns in those limited games, you guys wouldn't have scored much. The running game didn't help as much last year. Um, so yeah, that I remember one game though against the Eagles. I don't remember specifically when Love came in. Love looked good that game, and that's I think it's the last time I saw him. So no, there's little little chances that he. I think there is stuff there. Um, but yeah, like like you said, if these hamstrings, I think the hamstring might be a little bit more because these are speed guys. These aren't like a 
Kelvin Benjamin. So like these aren't guys that like are have a hamstring and they can probably plot through and just like catch a red zone target. These are guys that rely on speed. So that deep, that deep target that you said Watson would get week one might not be there. So who's going to be the next target? It would be Reed. Go Packers. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. That's it. Notice I'm <laughs> yeah. wearing lions blue today though. I don't know. I, I, I it's, you're ready I feel like football. you're ready for football. I'll I'm ready it. for some football today. I, and honestly, I, I I'm excited to watch Lions football. And I, yeah. I, they were fun to watch last year. And I think this year they like actually have a chance and they actually believe they have a chance. So they're going to be fun to watch. I'm, I'm, I'm in on Lions football this year from for a sure. from a watching standpoint. Um, but I'm still a Packers fan, which is weird. But it's the, the yeah, Lions are like Jameer the only Gibbs one in the division. Montgomery I split is going to be another one. Yeah, oh, the, the Jameer Gibbs Montgomery is going to be something that's, very that's interesting. That that's the that's the fun thing to watch. We know St. Brown's going to get 100 targets every game, so we're not worried about that. It's just about how is that RB situation going to be? Is Goff going to bad Goff too, right? Goff flips around a lot. So, like, <laughs> is he going to stay good Goff? I know that's your boy. So I'm just making sure that's a key part too because he had a really good year last year. He keeps that up. That will keep them in the right direction. I think I think they have enough weapons. Obviously, like you said, they brought Gibbs in as well. I, I think there's enough weapons there to make something happen. I, whatever's going on with Jamison Williams, I, I'm that's gross. I don't. I, I never was. What do, you, what do you mean? What's wrong with him? He's I, listen, I know, but he's gambling, and he went in, and he also got an injury in the short period of time that he was able to actually like learn the offense and get involved. And it's yeah. just like a weird scenario. I'm definitely out on him, even when he comes back. I'm yep. sure. He, I know. He, I know he, from what I've seen a couple years ago, was good at football. So. I don't know. Well, I'm a little out on him. First touch uh, last year as well, if you remember. So I, I, I don't. Very forgettable guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> no. But no, okay, so I, I am like the, the Gibbs Montgomery thing is very interesting. I think a lot of people think Jamal Williams' role is just now Montgomery, and he's going to be Jamal Williams. I don't know if he's as good at finding the end zone as Jamal Williams is, yeah. but it will definitely have the opportunities that he had. I don't know if there's going to be as many falling down on the one yard line. Uh, that was that was kind of weird last year. The, the, I'm the, the, in the middle. I don't think he's going to score as much as Jamal, but he's going to run more than Jamal. Like they're going to use because I don't think Gibbs is as good at the in between tackles. I think Gibbs is like you give him five carries, he's going to burst one of them for like forty. That's what he right. does. He's so good at receiving. They're going to put. He's going to be all over the field. But like Montgomery's going to, he might need fifteen carries. Like they might do that with him. They might give him twenty. There was one game I think a couple Jamal Williams was doing so well even get into the end zone. He usually does. You know I mean? Usually he's just there. You know, Aaron Jones would find his way down there, but like he would, he there's games where they, their run scheme was well enough that they were running well, even before they were at the end zone. Right. So Gibbs is a weird one. Cause like he could easily be a very good runner. We just have to, it's a it's wait and see thing. Right. But yeah, I got to watch one game in the usage. Yeah, for him. I do think if we meet in the middle, I don't think he scores the 20 or the 16, but at least, He's might be rushing a little bit more. They might use him more in the run game than we think. Yeah, and what's interesting is there a lot of these pick them, you know, pick them apps and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't want to name drop anything specifically, but uh, there, there's they're giving him uh, Montgomery 0. 0.5 over under 0. 0.5 rushing and and receiving touchdown. So will he fall into the end zone? I'm looking at it right here. I'm yeah. kind of in on that. I was looking <laughs> yeah. at that. And I'm like, he could yeah. fall in the end zone in a high scoring game. I mean, he might find his way. Well, what Jacob could say, we we have partners with six um with the uh, underdogs, uh, sleeper picks, um, prize picks. We're doing all that stuff. So yeah, like you said, all these little apps, they they have these odds that they if you parlay them with something else, they look good. Like Montgomery, yeah. like you just said, 0. 0.5 touchdown. Why is he not doing that? I think um at six score, we put our free pick in our newsletter. Uh, Montgomery 50 50.5 rushing yards. He should be doing that. This is a team, you know, Chiefs team that doesn't have two of their four often um, defense alignment, right? Jones is um holding out. And uh, men who is suspended, um, not as injury related, but the Chiefs did mention that they are practicing like Jones is injured. So there you go. Like so that stuff like that, like it, it looks like a good game to watch how they use running back because it's an advantage field game for them as well. In my head, they're both scoring 50 points tonight. Yeah, but I know. I know. First game of the season, we're going to it's going to be halftime. It's going to be like three, seven. And we're going to be like, what's going on here? Like, can we yeah. get some more? Some more action. I don't know. I, I'm ready. I'm ready for anything at this point, but I'm hoping it's going to be a great game. Yeah. All right. That's a good segue. Let's get into some shootouts and droughts. Mm, it's some shootouts and droughts. It's on the it's on the loop, man. We got that thing on the loop. I think we should just do the whole segment with the music under it. Oh, uh, I'm loop. working. It definitely we'll wouldn't just, get annoying. We'll I know that. Every time. He knows that's you, Justin. Do you think they listen to this and they're like, oh, that's 
Justin Rob Doyle's. Voice. No, they're listening to that and they're like, "What? What? What did I just? What just in, entered my eardrum? That should not be here." Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, we already talked about the Thursday game. Uh, the other top uh, over under of the week is Dolphins Chargers, fifty and a half. It should any, be any way either. that's not a track meet. Yeah, that's a that's not not a track meet, right? Like those are both offenses. They're they're pretty healthy, right? Going the season. Um, we are worried about Tua just until he gets hit. So if he's not getting hit. Two is going to be gunslinging away. Tyreek's fine. Um, Herbert's better. That whole Chargers offense is better, healthier. Slater's back, left tackle. They got Kellen Moore, who just doesn't want to run, which is completely fine. So that that seems like an over game. Uh, next one I got is Bengals Browns, 48 and a half. That's a weird one. That seems like Not price. Sure about that one. I feel like that one goes under. What do you think on that? Yeah, I, I don't I, I'm still I'm still hesitant to buy into the Browns offense. I don't. I don't know why. I just it, it, nothing is outside of Nick Chubb. I don't. I don't think that's a sexy offense to me personally. I don't know if that's going to be. Uh, that's an over offense. I know that the Bengals are obviously going to. They just put up points. And Burrow's going to sling it a lot. I don't know that it, it's all going to happen in the air to me. I feel like for the for the Bengals, and it's got to happen on the ground to me. I, I, I'm just not in on Deshaun Watson. I obviously he came back last year, and looked. Just not great at football, and I know he'd been out of the game for a while, so I got to get him a little slack there. Obviously, in an off season, he's probably ready to come back and show people that he's still good. I don't know. If, I don't know. I'm not in on the over on this one. I feel like that's not going to be one I, I want to buy in on the on the Browns offense. That's another wait and see offense for me. I got a lot of Amari Cooper, so I don't know if that's in on Watson. I mean, Cooper had like nine quarterbacks last year, and he did well. <laughs> he actually was surprisingly yeah. good last year. So, like, that might be something like, you know, if Watson is good, then I get Cooper. If he's bad, if Cooper's still good somehow. But like you said, yeah, they need to they need to run the ball. If they can't, then they're going to have to, like, throw 100 times with Watson in a Texan stall. That's either good or the, either way they're losing, right? So, like, <laughs> it, it's not a good strategy, I don't think. Um, that's a weird one, though. I think it's probably – I might be one to stay away from. I think one team scores and one team might not, which might fall right in the, the number. I know everyone's uh, expecting the Bengals just to come out throwing like crazy, too, but uh, Brown's pass rush is much improved with Zadarius Smith to go along with Miles Garrett, so that'll be an interesting one going against the, the backup right tackle with Leo Collins still out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cowboys Giants is the next one, 45 and a half. That's the Sunday night game. Um, th- that's a rivalry. They usually like fight it out. And then sometimes one of them beats the crap out of the other. You know, one's the clearly not ready. You see like a 30 13 game. That one's interesting. It is like, you know, prime time, right? Um, Jacob, do you think that that's going to go over or that's a weird one? I don't know if there's, I have uh, much on each one. They both have looked like they have improved offenses this year, but Giants still have a little bit of issues at wide receiver, right? So I don't know if they're how well they're going to run the uh you know move the ball down the field yeah there's a lot of talk about Dak Prescott and what we're going to get from him this year I think maybe people are a little too low on him but the Tyler Smith injury left guard with the hamstring that that's kind of concerning especially uh Tony Pollard and then I don't know who's behind him Deuce Vaughn yeah (laughs) I hope it's Deuce I hope it's Deuce wave Malik Davis yeah it's literally Deuce Vaughn and Rico Dinwiddley I don't know (laughs) yeah Sounds right to me. Gojo's no yeah. not there. Gojo's no there as well. I don't talk, I don't count count him in the mix. Somewhere yes. deep in the mix, he's suspended <laughs> right now. Currently, actually, Rojo. So, like you said, you, oh, just gotta, it you gotta make sure you just discount him because, like, he's always disappoints you some way. I didn't even know he was suspended until this right in the second. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just assume he's not playing. See, we're learning things ahead of week one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Giants defense is good. That, that pass rush is elite. So I, I, that'd be interesting to see how the Tyler Smith affects that if he's playing or not. Uh, last one is Bills Jets Monday night game, much anticipated Aaron Rodgers debut. I think that's an uh, under game. I don't know if the Jets are ready. I think Hard Knocks thinks they're ready. I don't know if the world does. Um, Bills have a good defense. I know Hyde's hurt, but they still have a good defense all around. Um, those are good offenses, but I don't. I think they'll get better in the middle of the season, both of them. I don't know if they come out hot. They're not like an immediate strike offenses like those Chiefs or like even the Lions now. Um, Justin, what are your thoughts on that? I've definitely not ever seen an Aaron Rodgers team come out flat to start his football season. That's for true. Never. Uh, and that's, that's, that's definitely <laughs> never happened. Uh, but I do think he's going to have – like he actually is going to be – fired up i think uh, i obviously it's a new location he wants he just loves proving people wrong so i, I do think they're going to come out and and try to light it up but i don't i do think that might be both teams coming out 
and just trying too much and it, it probably yeah. falls flatter than most people are expecting but it, it, obviously it's a prime time game on monday night first game of the season you can't really predict that i know it's hard to but I'm, I'm also it's also really hard to predict two teams coming out and playing amazingly and having it be the over so it's like i i would err on the side of caution for those two teams because i think there's a lot of expectations for both and and they're but it's going to be I, I, there's going to be some some scrapping in that one i feel like um but i don't know i mean i i would i would think that the bills are are, are still the better team uh, until the jets prove otherwise i think that that's the case the one I was going to mention too, last one, uh, Jacob, um, not necessarily over under, but uh, Houston Texans and Ravens. Um, I would just fade the Houston Texans offense just to start in general. They have three offensive linemen that are on IR to start of the season, a rookie quarterback and a wide receiver group that hasn't yet figured out who's going to be in charge. I know I like Nico. We like Robert Woods. There's multiple people there. Menchie's back, but Dalton Schultz is going to be a target machine, I think, but just first start of the year i know it's the ravens they have some issues at cornerback but three offensive line out we seen that at six score.com that's not something you can play a good enough offense behind i think the weirdest part about these these rookie quarterbacks is they're just like this is the least i've heard rookie quarterbacks talked about in, yeah. i think going into a season and there's t there's there's ones that are that were drafted at the top overall that are that are starting them, for a team all the ones that were drafted top overall are the ones that are starting yeah and they're starting and like no one's yeah. saying anything about it it's kind of kind of weird this is no i don't know it, it, it's a strange strange to go in the season i feel like bryce young has an opportunity to be good cj stroud i thought looked good in college i i don't know can I tell it, you the reason can i tell you a theory it's the markets they got houston texans horrible no. market carolina panthers you know personally horrible market <laughs> And then the Indianapolis Colts, not only a bad market, <laughs> no one likes their franchise right now because they're messing around with Jonathan Taylor, even fellow running backs and stuff. And like GMs are like, that's how you're treating a star player. What star is going to go over there now if you're seeing that? You know, so those are that's the one thing I'll say if that seems like common denominator with those is like those markets aren't really pushing them either. Like if yeah. Anthony Richardson in New York, he's like, He's on every single billboard. Like he's he's at the Madison Square Garden before the like you know handing out Nick's stuff. You know he's getting them involved, ingratiated with the city. You know you know you might be they might be doing that. You can't say they're not, but like right. they're not pushing it out there like that. So anymore. let's let's do something. Let's let's put ourselves on the line here. Out of those three, who's got the most fantasy points week one? I want to say Young. Young, his offense line's bad, but I don't Falcons Okuda's issue. Uh, I just and Richardson's an issue too because there's no there's a, you got a third string running back if Moss isn't playing so I don't like you need to have at least some side of stability back there at least Shroud's gonna have Pierce I know he's not gonna be able to run the ball with that offensive line but he has something to like rely on uh, I yeah I would say Bryce Young has the best game but barely I don't think any of them yeah I might I might I might get a little weird I, I, I might go with CJ Stroud here. And just okay. think that maybe he cut. Maybe there's a couple deep balls that that connect. I don't know. Ravens have just, no Marlon Humphrey, so he can throw one up it's, there. He, it's yeah. possible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with C.J. Stroud, and we'll, and we'll revisit this next week and see see what's going. Because I I feel like no one's talking about rookie wide or quarterbacks going into week one, and I we feel will. like we we're will. the ones. We're the ones. <laughs> yeah, we're doing we're it. <laughs> I was gonna say if the fantasy community is any indication, Anthony Richardson is is my pick. I feel like I've heard it more about Anthony Richardson than CJ Stroud and Bryce Young combined, and they were the top two picks. So that's yeah. <laughs> that's an interesting uh, interesting one. But I yeah, Anthony Richardson going against the Jaguars, I believe. But obviously the Colts have a lot of issues that have extended in the season, so it'll be it'll be fun to watch. We'll definitely good. We all pick different ones, and uh, and this is yes. obviously for a lot of money. We just put this on uh, hundreds behind yes. the scenes. <laughs> yes, hundreds of thousands actually. So all right, cool. We're good. we're on record. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll be back next week talking uh, matchups. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about. Plenty, of, Hopefully not too many injuries. It feels like it's been already a heavy fantasy injury season. It has season hasn't even started. So, uh, yeah. Go, uh, go Anthony Richardson. Rooting for my rookie. Oh, yeah. Get a CJ Stroud jersey. I, I think you can get it for cheap. I think it's available. Oh, Texans jerseys? Yeah, probably. That's mean. <laughs> not nice. Sorry. Sorry, Texans. I know. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you next week. Savior.